Everyone wants to predict who the next Cooper Cup is for 2022, with the correct answer probably being no. But based on Cup's profile entering last season, is there a player that fits that mold heading into this year? Basically, what we're looking for is a veteran receiver, preferably at least four years into their career, with a history of past elite production since Cup was the wide receiver four in 2019. A player valued outside the top 24 among wide receivers in Dynasty and maybe most importantly is getting a massive quarterback upgrade. And using all of that, there's only really one wide receiver that fits this profile to a T and that's new Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. I mean, he has it all. He's entering his sixth season in the NFL with three top 24 finishes, including a career high wide receiver eight finish on his resume. He's currently valued as the wide receiver 34 in June DLF ADP. And then honestly, is there any more of a massive quarterback upgrade than going from a 40 year old Ben Roethlisberger to Patrick Mahomes? He fits every part of this criteria of the next Cooper Cup, unlike a lot of the other players incorrectly being identified as such. And contrary to popular belief, Juju is a good wide receiver. No, he's not a burner. No, he's not a good man coverage separator but he is very good against zone defenses. He was actually top 10, in fact, from reception perception last year against zone defenses, which was better than Hollywood Brown, better than CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, AJ Brown, and Jalen Waddle. He's good after the catch as well, and have we forgotten that Juju is one of only 14 receivers to have a season with 90 or more receptions and nine or more touchdowns since 2017? But his yards per reception. I don't care. Did you watch the Steelers? Did you watch Ben Roethlisberger the last three years? Because if you did, then you would know that Ben was incapable of throwing more than 30 yards. And honestly, anything even inside of 10 yards was an accuracy struggle. Michelle Majuk actually put together this fantastic tweet with all of Juju's targets from his last fully healthy game against the Packers last year. In that game, Juju had two receptions for 11 yards on eight targets, but was missed on at least three other receptions that could have added 75 or more yards and a touchdown to that stat line, which would have taken his fantasy day from three fantasy points to 20, just on three missed throws that Patrick Mahomes isn't going to miss. So that brings us to the Chiefs side of this equation. They lose Tyree Kill, a big part of their offense. They have the second most vacated targets at 340 this year, plus the third most vacated air yards at 62%. All they did was they just took a money ball approach to losing Tyreek by adding Juju, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and then drafting Sky Moore. Guys, you're still trying to replace Giambi. I told you we can't do it, and we can't do it. Now, what we might be able to do is recreate him. We create him in the aggregate. I don't expect Mahomes to plummet in production. He's still Patrick Mahomes. He still has Andy Reid, and he still has one other elite weapon in Travis Kelsey. But of the three wide receivers on this team, Juju is by far the most solidified in terms of talent, experience, and historical production. Listen, I really, really, really like Sky Moore, but he's a second round rookie from a smaller power five school. So we should really temper expectations for year one. MVS, I mean, come on. Like he was given chances to be the wide receiver two in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers and he couldn't make that happen. So what makes us think that he'll do that any better now with the Chiefs? So the answer at wide receiver is legitimately Juju Smith-Schuster as the Chiefs wide receiver one. And when that happens, not only is he going to outproduce his disrespectful wide receiver 34 ADP, but potentially gain significant value since he will still only be 26 years old next year with multiple seasons of elite fantasy production. And that is why, to me, he is this year's Cooper Cup. Moving on to the quarterback position, I have my prediction on this year's Joe Burrow, meaning a young, highly drafted quarterback has shown flashes of great fantasy production before. And now their team has added a significant wide receiver to their offense that is going to greatly improve everything on this team. Honestly, with how many trades that went down this offseason, as well as the number of wide receivers drafted in the first round this year, this could be a couple of players. But I'm talking very specifically about Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungle Viola. He fits all the criteria for this year's Joe Burrow. He's young. He has a pedigree as a former top five NFL pick. And as we all know, the Dolphins traded for Tyree Kill, which is a huge boost to this offense and to his potential production. And yes, we have seen flashes of great fantasy production before, including last year from week six through 15, Tua was the quarterback 11 in fantasy points per game, which includes a week where all he had was 158 passing yards, no touchdowns, no nothing, just 158 yards. 
He averaged more points per game over that 10-week stretch than Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, and Derek Carr. And Tua, like I said, was the QB 11. Guess who the QB 10 was? Joe Burrow. So we've seen basically the same type of production stretches from Tua as we did from Joe Burrow in both of their short careers, but Burrow really took off because he was and is now throwing to two of the best receivers in the league. Well, same thing can be said for Tua now in 2022 with that same opportunity throwing to Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Tua also has the benefit of a brand new offensive system for Mike McDaniel that I have very, very high hopes for as potentially the East Coast 49ers of the AFC. I mean, Jimmy G last year was the QB 17 in the Niners offense, mainly because he was thrown to Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. And I think Tua is a much better quarterback than Jimmy G and has a much higher ceiling in both the NFL and for fantasy. I've seen a lot of hate towards Tyreek Hill on the Miami Dolphins, but I seriously think we're underestimating how much Tyree Kill is going to do for this offense. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't think he's going to be Chiefs Tyree Kill with Patrick Mahomes. That was a very, very special pairing. But Mahomes didn't make Tyreek, just like Tyreek didn't make Mahomes. I can count on one hand the number of difference makers in the league at Tyree Kill's level, and I probably don't even need my entire hand. Remember, every dump off to Tyreek that he takes to the house is fantasy points for Tua. Every slant route that goes for 30 yards more than what it should have just because Tyree Kill is faster than everybody on the field is fantasy points for Tua. Down the middle. It's Hill in the open. Cuts it upfield. He might be gone. He is. And he has two of those guys in Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, who was regularly comped to being the next Tyree Kill when he was coming out of college. Like I said, Jimmy G was the QB 17 last year by no means whatever he did and by doing nothing special on his own. It was entirely his weapon. So Tua can easily be a mid QB two for fantasy by just being what Jimmy G was last year, let alone anything extra that he can bring to the table because he's better than Jimmy G in every facet of the game. Not to mention if this offense were to actually click, if the chemistry between Tua and Tyree Kill and Tua and Jalen Waddle were to do really well and the offense explodes more than we predict, then he could potentially be higher than a high-end QB2 and bump up into the back-end QB1 or even back-end of the top 10 quarterbacks in 2022. So that's how I see Tua becoming the next Joe Burrow and having a really, really good season for fantasy in 2022. If you want to check out two more players that Justin absolutely loves in Dynasty, you can check out this video right up here.